Hi, everyone. This is Brittany Bond, and welcome back to the podcast. <clears throat> it has been a hot minute since I have released something to you, you lovely, lovely souls. I have been going through a lot of my own transformation. If I'm ever quiet on the podcast line, it's because <clears throat> Brittany Bond is going through her shit. And, you know, I'm really honest about that to myself and to my close people. And also, I find it to be really valuable to understand what to post and what to share publicly and what to allow myself to go through privately. And this is something <clears throat> that I've been navigating because I find that in order, <clears throat> in order for me to actually be my authentic self, I need to have a lot of space to process things and... Um, something about dating someone who is famous <clears throat> and also being very well known in my community here on Copenhagen. There is something about having that privacy and that space to actually work through stuff. So <clears throat> to give you a relationship update, because Parody's already been posting about it, uh, we're good. We are figuring out our stuff. We're creating a lot of space in between us in order to make sure that we are our own individual authentic selves within the constellation of <clears throat> the dynamic with each other. I have something in my throat. Hold on. <coughs> It's so interesting when I start um, recording a podcast sometimes, suddenly I'll have something in my throat and it's like, um, the kitty. Meow, meow. Um, it's also, I feel like, Sometimes it's like so much energy about to go through my throat chakra that it's like, oh, we're getting a little, a little, just a lot of energy trying to go through one central energy uh, chakra point. It's a lot. Um, so today I want to share with you a lot of things. The main thing is... Um, I've been talking to a lot of women who have come through Copenhagen here during high season and they say that like, I don't know, just coming to the island is, as a woman is such an interesting thing because we spend most of our lives as women like wanting to be in our happy, flowy, inner child self, which is also our sens sensuality and also our pleasure. And... um <clears throat> A lot of the outside world is not safe for this. It's not safe for us to be a fully embodied woman. Or, yeah, we can do it, but it doesn't necessarily feel so comfortable. Like, it feels like for me, when I'm in the outside world, outside of Copenhagen, I have to put a lot of protection layers around me in order to feel comfortable to be myself. So it comes out as a lot more like the badass Britney than like the soft and flowy Britney which is also part of me, but it doesn't necessarily mean I want to be that version of me. That's not like my resting place. My resting version of Brittany is the mermaid who is naked at sunset every day with my dog and flowing through waterfalls and on my little red scooter, zipping around, listening to music and, you know, wearing cute, sexy, there's basically almost nothing <laughs> around because this is who I am. I feel like being naked is just being naked. It's not an invitation for sexual in like connection with anyone else. It's just me enjoying being in my body. Uh, and a lot of women, when they come to the island, they are also in this mode of like full transformation into embodiment. Like, wow, it is safe to fully be in my body, to feel pleasure, to wear whatever I want to wear that makes me feel sexy and excited for life and you know go to a naked beach we have a beach here that is literally us locals or us locals foreigner locals who live on the island call it naked beach because the Thai people have accepted that it's okay for us to be naked here they kind of just gave up on this one beach and so for most of us who live here and for people visiting at sunset this is the place that we go to vibe And a lot of people go there to be in their own energy. It's like they bring their journals, they wear their headphones and like listen to meditation music. Like for me, I go there a lot and meditate, do rape, 
journal, swim with Afro, my dog. And it's just kind of like my me time. And even when Freddie and I go together, like he will go swim with his goggles and be a dolphin. And I'm like, okay, I want my meditation time or I want my time just to like be in my own energy and look at sunset. And I've spoken to a lot of women recently where, you know, they're new to the island, they're new to how things work here. And what happens, what I'm noticing is that a lot of women come here and they're like, wow, it is so safe to be fully in my, in my sexual power, which is just, what I mean by that is like being okay, feeling like a, a sexual being in a female body. So that doesn't mean that they're actually acting on anything sexually. That doesn't mean that they are inviting men's attention. Ooh, my cat is jumping up on the window trying to go outside. I'm going to open the window for her and try and not knock everything over. Um, She likes to jump outside and sit on the AC and look at things. Come on, go baby. Um, So... What I mean by being like a fully, you know, in my power sexually as a female in the timeline, again, this is not inviting men's attention. It's just like I am fully, what I mean by that is like as a woman, a lot of times we haven't had an experience where it's safe to be fully vibing in our bodies, like fully in our bodies, fully feeling ourselves, like having a great time, feeling like we look good, feeling sexy. And also, oh, it's okay to be flirty. It's okay to vibe. But that doesn't mean that we want... It's like, I I guess the best way I can describe it is I am fully in my pleasure for being alive and being in my female body. Like, a lot of times I myself will wake up and like meditate and then I'll masturbate and then like this morning I did those things and then I painted and I danced and I did yoga and you know ate watermelon talked to Faraday and you know but I was just like I was really like I would go in the mirror and I'm like dancing and like twerking and he's like you know of course fully enjoying whatever I'm doing but Faraday is not looking at it as an invitation for me to want his attention he just knows that this is Brittany vibing and just doing her thing and I see a lot of women go into this mode of like hold on my microphone is doing weird things I see a lot of women here on the island going into dropping into this like feeling fully safe to be sexy and embodied and usually it's new men who live here, who come to the island, not men who live here because they have already, the, the thing to know is if you live here, we have a community that is actually very strong and solid and there's a lot of accountability. We have a Koponyong women's Facebook group um, where if there's like a creepy guy, people will post about it and kind of just warn the rest of the sisters, hey, I had this bad experience, just so you guys know. Um, and... Um, but for new men who come to the island, what they see, I notice is like, wow, there's all these women and energetically they appear to be very open and they appear to be like really sexy and vibing. And there's like a lot of sexual energy that's coming for women. And for us women, we're like, we've been shutting down the fact that we are also sexual creatures for most of our lives because we've been shamed to believe that, um, it's wrong to have this energy in general. And also if we do have this energy, it means there's an invitation for a man to come and just gobble up this energy. So I, I noticed there's a lot of these questions that women are facing is like, how do I be this like sovereign, which means like I'm in control of my, my own body. How do I be this sovereign being of, of a female body who's also like fully in my pleasure, fully in my sexuality, and, and not be like gobbled up by masculine energy that is just on the island. And what happens is, is like, for instance, I'll give you the example of Naked Beach. Naked Beach, a lot of women go there at sunset to be in their own energy. And maybe some of these are single women who don't know anyone yet on the island. There's a lot of men who go to this beach specifically to pick up on women. And if the woman does not, 
you know, like accept this invitation of a pickup. They get very aggressive and verbally aggressive, not physically, verbally aggressive and like shame the women almost for like being their sexual creatures. And this makes me very angry (laughs) because... But, you know, a part of me is like, okay, this is also part of the learning for women. So I'm, I'm speaking this out loud so that you understand. You can skip some of these steps of what we call fawning, F-A-W-N, like it's like a deer in the headlights. When a deer is in the headlights and a car is coming, they just kind of freeze. And they just like go along with whatever is happening. Um, and a lot of women do this when they're they're approached by men on the island because they still have this programming of of servi- servience, like in the energy dynamic of men and women traditionally for over for thousands of years, it's not king queen, it's king servant, king slave. And a lot of men still have this mentality. This ener- it's an energy dynamic of like, yeah, women are here to serve me and I'm going to just like bestow my energy on them as my king, as like, you know, they think they're a king and and then they just love me. And you know, and so I'm just going to go bestow my energy on these women as they are naked on Naked Beach, because in my opinion, that's an invitation. They are naked. And so I can just approach them. And a lot of women are like, ah, I don't know what to do. I'm giving him all these body signals that I don't want this. But what you don't realize is that these men are doing this on purpose. They know the game. And you're not quite, as a woman, woken up to the game that's being played here on the island. So I'm telling you the game so you can be woken up and you can just like cut a lot of this shit out. Um, so as someone who is in the female body and has lived on this island for over four years, what I have learned is that I don't have to go along with someone asking me, where are you from? What's going on? How are you doing? I can just say, thank you for your nice energy. I actually want to be in my own energy right now. I don't want to talk. Thank you so much. And I do like the sacred no, which is like, you know, the hands in a prayer. And if a guy responds negatively to this, that kind of told, tells you already that they shouldn't be in your life. Uh, because if a guy is like becoming verbally aggressive after you politely decline any invitation for connection, then they should just really fuck off in my opinion. Uh, so I've heard multiple stories of women who are like, yeah, I, I was just, you know, doing my own thing at the beach and this guy comes up and then he invites me to dinner and I don't, I didn't really want to go, but then I didn't want to tell him no. So then I went to dinner and I was like, well, what did you talk about? Like, what, what did you even do at dinner if you didn't want to be there? And she's like, he just kept talking and I just listened and I just felt like energetically like drained. I was like, he's like energy vampiring you. And she's like, yeah. And then he wanted to do more romantically. And I said, no, I was happy. I finally said no to that. And I was like, did you even want to go to dinner? And she's like, no. And I'm like, did you even want to hang out with this guy? And she's like, no. And I'm like, why didn't you tell him no in the first place? And these men are just, they're literally looking at women, like how many connections can I get? Oh, these are easy, kind of easy pickings. So what I do is when a man approaches me, I'm like, no, I I, I just say like, no, thank you. I want to be my own energy. I'm very, I'm very direct about it. Like it doesn't, and I, and I'm very nice about it. I'm not like, I'm not going to be rude. I'm not a bitch or anything, but I am allowed as a sovereign in control of my body in the female body to be fully in my sexual energy, fully vibing naked at the beach and allowed to have that mean nothing to anyone else around me. But that is not an invitation for connection. Um, I'll give you some examples of things that have happened to me just so you see how normal this is. One time I was at the beach, like this was a couple months ago. I had my I, was, I had my headphones on. I had my hat on. I had my sunglasses on. I was full in like, and I was in a really bad mo- mood and I needed to go to the beach to just to let, let the energy go through. So I'm sitting in the water like naked except for my hat and my sunglasses and my headphones because I just wanted to block the sun and also listen to music. I was listening to meditation music. And this guy, I c- he comes and like puts his stuff down like really close to me for it being a very empty beach. And then he comes and just like comes in my peripheral on the side and he tries to like talk to me. And I was just said, hi, I don't want to talk right now. 
And then he's like, okay. And then he like goes in front of me. Again, it's a very empty beach, both directions. And he just stands in front of me facing away. So like completely blocking me from the view. And I'm just like, dude, I don't like in my head, I'm thinking this is, this is not going to go well for you. Like, I don't know if this works for other women, but this is not working for me. And I was also really pissed off because I came to the beach to be in my own energy. And then he walks directly backwards at me. So I cannot get away from him. Like, and I can't pretend like I don't see him. And he's like, so what's your name? What are you doing? And I said, I told you, I do not want to talk right now. I do not want to talk to you. And then he was like, oh, you don't need to be so rude. And like, what's your problem? Da, 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 da. And I was like, I did not come to the beach to talk to men. I came to be alone. Please leave me alone. And he was like, okay, okay, I'll leave you alone. And then I just saw him get up and like put his stuff near another woman and like start over. And I was like, dude, this is not cool. And it's so interesting because I was here during lockdown on the island where we knew everyone, like the, none of this stuff happened. So I would go to the beach and if I saw someone at the beach, it was someone that I knew that was in my community. And so everything just felt so safe in my body. And suddenly there's just like these random men <laughs> coming and just thinking that they can just bestow their energy on women and just like take energetically vampire the situation and I'm just like this is not okay and then I hear this over and over again with a lot of the women especially the new women that I'm meeting who are coming to the island and it's a constant theme of well I didn't want to be mean and and you know as women we have this very deep internal fear that men don't realize is there has been a very recent past in our genetics. It's in our genes. It's in our body passed down from, you know, we hold as women 11 generations of women genes in our body, in our womb. I'm holding my womb right now as I say this. So in the past, there may have been times where women in our family lineage, so this is, we're carrying this in our body, said no to men, spoke their boundaries, and they were actually physically hurt for this or you know like something very negative happened and a lot of times it's like an actual physical fear sensation that's in our bodies that we don't realize and so a lot of this fawning this this going along with whatever the masculine wants is not even from us it's from past generations and it's our opportunity i always joke opportunity for growth um, because it's true and also I hate when people say that, but I say it. <laughs> um, but it's our opportunity for growth to heal this generational trauma. And we we don't have to be fully in our masculine and like, you know, attack people. We don't need to be mean. We don't need to do anything. But we need to, being like, setting boundaries is like, you know, this healthy, righteous anger is like, hey, this is my space. You don't fuck with my space. And that is the healthy masculine that is inside of each of us women that is wants to come out and protect us if we allow it to. So for me, I really allow this out whenever I need it to happen. There has been other times where, and this only happens during high season where I'm like at the beach and it's, and it's, you know, naked beach and I, I'm there meditating. I'm, you know, naked. It's sunset. Everyone around me is naked. Um, but I'm me, you know, like I have a certain vibe. I understand that I draw more attention than maybe normal people. I don't know, but I find a lot of men stare at me and a lot of them are, I can tell they're new to the island and they just don't know me as Brittany. And I will just give them, the, I won't even talk to them. I just give them this gesture of like, what the fuck? Like, why are you staring at me? And then you can see this mode in them where they go from, this kind of consuming vampire energy of like, oh, it's a feminine, I can do whatever I want to, like waking up like, oh, fuck, she fights back kind of thing, like energetically. And then they're just like, oh, sorry, sorry. And they like turn away. And for me, this is me being in my healthy masculine within a, fe a feminine body. And I, I really invite women to be doing this more, especially here on the island, because if you're coming into your feminine full expression expression power which is like sensuality and sexuality and feeling your pleasure you also need to have healthy masculine boundaries we all this is the divine union of of, of energy within our own bodies we each have this and I really invite all the women listening to this whether you're in your home country or you're coming to Koponyong to 
be more in your pleasure, to be more in your feeling vibey in your body and your in your sexuality, and also to be healthy in your boundaries. So, um, I had another like. I just have had so many women that I've been speaking this to and they're relating to it so much. And I, I see a lot of them speaking up more and it's really, really beautiful because the whole story about the naked beach thing, yes, we are naked, but I feel like this is a great opportunity for all of us to step in our power more because it's like the opposite of everything the matrix says it's okay, which is like us being naked, following our power at sunset in our community. And are we safe in that? Like, are we safe? Cause a lot of times the stuff is happening also with many other people around. Like, and I'm, and I'm saying, speaking to the men who are listening to this, if you notice that a guy is going up to a woman in any situation and the woman is feeling uncomfortable and she doesn't quite feel safe to speak up. Maybe this is this fawn reaction of like, if I say no, is he going to hurt me like, without even consciously realizing it? It is your opportunity for growth to be the healthy masculine in a male body to, you don't even have to say anything. You can just go and like sit next to the woman or stand near the woman and just be in a solid a solid safe presence in that situation because the thing is, is the men that are on the island longer the reason why a lot of them that don't do this even if they wanted to is because there is a lot of accountability on the island so the longer that you live here the more we all know each other we know who's who we know we know each other's stuff good and bad and there is this feeling of I'm in tribe and there's I need to watch out for each other. I need to speak up for my fellow community member, whether they're in the female or the male body. And, you know, Faraday and I have talked about this a lot about like, I'll just put this invitation out there. Him and I are usually every day at the end of Naked Beach when it hits Bovey Beach. If you look at Google Maps, you can see what I'm talking about. And I don't really want to say where the beach is because it's like, if you live here, you know where I'm talking about. Um, but basically like at the end of Naked Beach where it hits the concrete wall to Bovey Beach, Faraday and I are usually there every day with Afro. We don't necessarily want to talk to anyone else, but if you want to come and just sit next to us and be in our energy and feel safe to be your vibey, happy self, you are more than welcome to do this. And I've even done meetups here with women on the island where we just made that like the meetup spot if like women wanted to come and be in their own energy and be naked together and feel safe to be, I think this is the thing is like the feminine, like us in our full power is being like being and la allowing all of the source energy to come through us and through how it feels in our body. We get all of the, we get all of the connection points and the, the, the intuitive urges to follow through on the next thing. And everyone gets this, but being in the female body, we have a lot more power in this, but we have to feel safe to, to access this. And, and this is one of the steps that happens when women come to Koponyong is they're suddenly going through the process of letting go of their own programming to feel safe in their own bodies. And then also this is why I'm saying all of this is because each of us has um, like self-responsibility in order to speak up for what we need. But sometimes we need to be given all the information because when I would, when I sit and talk to you guys one-on-one, -on -one, to you women, to you ladies, not guys, when I talk to you ladies one-on-one -on -one and I s explain like, oh yeah, this is just how it goes on the island. It's kind of this loop of like women coming, not understanding the game, men who are new thinking they can just you know, <laughs> energy vampire and pick up on women and it's kind of this numbers game for them. And then when I say this to them and their eyes light up and they just get like kind of fiery, they're like, what? This is happening to everyone? It's not just me? And I'm like, yeah. And like, it's time for you to speak up, girl. Like, if you don't want that, just say no. And if they get aggressive with you, get louder. Like, um, my friend yesterday, oh my God, this story, I was laughing so hard because I love this story so much. 
Um, and she, you know, I, she's one, one of the women I've been speaking to about this and she's lived on the island for a while. And um, she was like at Naked Beach yesterday and she put her stuff down. And again, like this guy, another guy came, sat awkwardly close next to her compared to how empty the beach was. She was like, whatever, because she was in her own vibe, like journaling, drawing, and then she went in the sea. And when she came out, he like stood up and walked towards her and started speaking to her in a different language. And she was like, I don't speak whatever language you're speaking. And he's like, you know, oh, you're American. You guys only speak one language, huh? And then just starts starts talking. And she's like, what the fuck? Like, I don't even want to talk to you. And now you're being rude to me. And so she said to him, hey, I, I want to be in my own energy. I don't want to talk to you. And then he's like, you don't have to be so rude. What is your problem? And, did, and then starts getting like really verbally aggressive with him. And she's like, please leave me alone. And he like won't leave her alone. And then <laughs> she's on her period and she like pulls out her menstrual cup and like pours it on the ground in between them. Just like, what the fuck, dude? I'm going to be the crazy one. And then he just looks at her and is just like, okay. And like packs his things and leaves and like sits somewhere else. And she was messaging me this and I was like, we need more feral women like you on the island. We need like wild women to just be like, what the fuck, dude? Like, yeah, this is an extreme story, but this is kind of what we need is like women who are just like, yeah, I can be crazy if you want me to be, but just leave me alone. And I just love that story. I was like, <laughs> uh, when you come to Copenhagen, you'll understand that they're like, as women, we just get more and more bold. And this is the thing is we are just as outspoken as men. We've just been suppressed and we've allowed ourselves to be suppressed for so long. And I feel that one by one, a lot of us are waking up to this and we don't need to do this anymore. And also the collective needs us to wake up. Like the collective actually needs you to step in your power and say whatever you need to say and speak for whatever you need to speak and also to feel all the pleasure in your body and to be vibing and happy and feel safe and do what you can to feel safe in your body. This is something that Faraday and I have been talking about a lot recently is like how much is the masculine's responsibility so if you're in partnership how much is the masculine's responsibility to create a safe space and how much is it the feminine's responsibility to actually receive that safe space and allow themselves to you know i want to say fall into it but i don't think that's a good word uh, relax into it and and uh, unfold like a flower that is like blossoming and i feel like it's both you know i feel um, the masculine men, people who are in m men bodies today, they have more, more opportunities for them to create safe spaces for the feminine. Um, and the feminine, we have a lot of opportunity to take up that space because I noticed with Faraday and I, um, there's been a lot of times where he was giving me these opportunities and like trying his best to create a safe space for me. And I was, I was feeling still so unsafe in my body from past dynamics with men, from just, you know, so much trauma in my life that I was not allowing myself to actually drop into that safe space. Like I was basically like no space, according to me in that moment, no space was ever safe enough for me to actually just relax and have fun and be in my feminine power and I've really looked at this recently I've really like I've really grown a lot in this and and because of that I feel like I'm less running away from myself and looking for these safe spaces to f allow myself to drop in and I'm just I'm just dropping in I'm just vibing I'm just <laughs> waking up and masturbating um, because you know the you know the feeling if you've ever done psychedelics you know the feeling when you're just like in complete flow state when you, like so say you take acid or mushrooms and you're just my favorite in the I don't really take psychedelics anymore um, for me I go straight to like DMT world when I take psychedelics right now so I'm taking a little break from them um, and I, I think the point also is that to get to a point where life feels like psychedelics so this is what I'm about to say is 
in the past when I would take mushrooms or acid, some of my favorite things was microdosing on them. So not taking a, a full dose and just doing, doing my everyday life and um, seeing, seeing what life was like when, when I was able to allow myself to feel more safe in my body and to feel dropped in. So I would just like, like for instance, when I did acid microdosing for a while, I would do like 10 cc's between 10 and 30 cc's, uh, on one day and then one day off and then, you know, like do it every other day for like three days and then take a couple days off to let it reset. And what I noticed was the days that I was taking acid and I was like, I was just flowing more. I was just vibing. Like there was no actual time. It was just timing. Like it felt like the timing of whatever I was. So say I said, I said to myself in the morning, I want to do these two things. And then like, I wouldn't set a specific time. Like I need to do it at one or 2 PM. I would just flow through the day and then just synchronistically it would come up that I'd be like, yeah, it's a great time timing to do it right now. And then I would get it done and it would all feel so in flow and so vibey and I would feel so good in my body all the way through. And it's, it's like this, that moment of like timelessness where like everything just feels really amazing and you feel safe and you're just vibing like so hard, you know, like when you're on acid and you like listen to a song and you're just like, this is the, I've listened to this song before, but this is the best song ever. Like sometimes I'll like listen to music while on psychedelics and I'll just cry like so much because I feel music on a vibrational level. I feel like deeper than other people. Um, and I just, I'm just like, it's so beautiful. <laughs> so anyways, all of that being said, what I'm trying to say is lately I've been feeling all of those things without being on psychedelics. And I feel like that's because um, Faraday and I have gotten to a point in our dynamic and individually um, where we're hitting some of our core trauma. You know, this is the point of relationships is to bring it up Um so that it can be healed so like it comes up within a relationship dynamic in a safe way so that you can look at it process it let it go right and um in one of the I'll just speak for myself one of these core traumas was am I safe am I safe in my body am I safe is it safe to be my happy feminine um flowy self because ever since I was little I was shamed by my family specifically my dad uh, for being like too sexual in his opinion that I was like in and therefore in his opinion inviting men to come and suck on my energy uh, and I didn't even understand what he was talking about because I was just being myself and so I started like shutting down parts of myself thinking that they were bad uh, and like, even at one point I did modeling for a long time in my early twenties. And then I, after that, I just kind of like went into full business mode, like was working in a law firm for six years, did business consulting for large corporates. And I, looking back, I feel like I made myself less pretty. Like I was trying so hard to prove that I could get everything without my feminine energy. And then I realized that all of that is bullshit for my reality because my feminine energy is what makes everything feel good. So what, that's what I mean. It's like coming full circle. A lot of those moments in, you know, working in a law firm and working for this large consultancy firm, um, I did not feel good in my body. I was just, and like, I was just like counting the time of when I could go home, you know? And I felt like I wasn't being myself all the way. And now I'm fully being myself. Like <laughs> the way I make money right now is many things, but it's mostly only fans and organizing sex parties, which I just find so hilarious um, in a way that is super empowering for me and also everyone who comes to the play parties like Oh my gosh, we've been having such a fun time with the play parties this high season. We've been doing them every two weeks and we have 50 people coming every time with like 20 more on the waiting list. And and it's like changing people's lives, like literally 
they say like, wow, this, like there is a before and after moment of like a couple days for a couple days after they're just in this complete bliss and embodiment state and like anything's possible. And I even found out recently that like some people who met at one of our play parties last year, they met at our play party, started dating and now they have a baby together. And I have friends, I have some of my close friends, they connected at their, my one of my play parties and that's their anniversary date is the play party date that they came to um so lots of fun amazing success stories of connection because i love just hearing how people are connecting but also how they're growing um and for me this is me being completely in my power you know and just having the most vibey time ever and there is no time that's the point is i'm just flowing and like weeks go by and parties happen and connection happens and I'm just feeling so yummy in my body and so safe in my body. And for me, the equation within myself that I realized was I needed to feel safe and then I needed to feel at home wherever I am. And that means like mostly home in my body. And then when I was able to feel safe and at home in my body, I, I, I am complete joy. I am just so happy. I am vibing. Um, like I'm just radiating this pleasure body. Like the other day when we host aesthetic dances here as well. And I was doing, I felt like stretching during the sound healing at the end. And a friend came up to me and he was like, wow, you did a really sexy like yoga stretch there at the end. And I was like, I was just stretching. I didn't know that it was sexy. And this is what I realized is that me just being myself is sexual. And I feel like that is powerful. That is because that is me being my authentic self without me trying to do anything, without me putting on any persona. I am just myself. And and I feel like that is also kind of a statement in the world today that it's okay to be sexy. It's okay to be fully in your sexual power. No, that doesn't mean it's an invitation for anyone to gobble you up. And it doesn't mean it's an invitation for anything. It's just me shining and being my authentic self. And I hope that me shining and also, and also speaking my boundaries really clearly and super directly that it will help all of you to also speak your truth and to speak your boundaries and to be fully in your power in whatever way that means. Um, Like I had one woman say like, you know, it wasn't even that I didn't like the men that were coming up and approaching me here on the island. It was that I came to the island to be in my own energy. I just broken up with someone and I wanted to come here and have a solo trip or, and it was a place where I felt safe to be alone, to be solo And then I got all this invitations from men and she's like, a lot of the men I even thought were like nice and like there wasn't anything wrong with them, but I, I just wanted to be alone. I just wanted to vibe with myself. Like as a woman, I didn't have that many opportunities to be on my own and to figure out who I am. My connection point was always in relationship to whoever the guy was around me. And I was, and I said to her, so are you going to speak up more? And she was like, yeah, yeah. Especially after talking to you, I'm going to speak up a lot more because yeah, fuck that. I want to just be in my own energy. And I was like, wow, how powerful is it to be a woman who's fully in her power that doesn't need the masculine to reflect any of this and is okay being on their own and also just to get to know themselves as a sovereign being, as an individual in a female body connected to source and fully in their power and their joy. Because a lot of women have, and myself included, most of my life has been in reflection to whatever men are in my life, like whoever I'm dating or, you know, there's just, it's yeah, whoever I'm dating is really, because I've always like, I'm always in partnership normally. Like if you're looking at the span of my relationship dynamics, I've spent most of my life in in a romantic partnership. And so for me, the idea of is it safe is also like, do I have enough space to really make sure that I am being my authentic self all the way while also in this dynamic? And yeah, so 
speaking to that, Faraday and I are going to live apart for a bit because I really am excited to explore what it feels like to be in my own space and to still be in connection. Like, is it okay? Like to prove to myself, cause he says it, but also I've had so many times in the past where I'm like, Hey, I just, I need to be in my own energy. I need to be in my own space. Is that okay? And then the person like freaks out on me and, uh, and it's not okay for me to be able to be in my own energy, in my own space. And, and that's, I think that's some trauma that I need to heal, um, that I can be loved and in connection and also, um, wake up and do my thing for the day and choose to be connected to the person. Um, so anyways, he got a house like one minute away from the collective and we're vibing still. And I'm not quite sure one, one of us is going to move into this house. So I'll keep you updated, but it's all great. And we're having a be- the best time. Um, I feel like there's more things I wanted to say, but that was the main one was just like, if you're either here on the island or wherever you are in the world and you're listening to this and you're in a female body especially, I really invite you to follow what is your pleasure. Follow what makes you happy that is not in connection to a man. <laughs> um, like make yourself the main priority in your life. And then what happens after that is you have so much more energy for all the people you love in your life. Like when you give to yourself first and when you fill up your cup first, and this is something we know, but as women, we're also simultaneously trained to serve everyone around us instead of, you know, find what is our joy first. So I really invite you to do something today that makes you feel yummy in your body, whether it's going to a coffee shop by yourself and listening to music and journaling or drawing or, you know, going into nature and meditating or taking a really yummy bath with candles and music and just having some alone time with yourself and like pretend like you're going on a date with someone else, but that date is actually with yourself. And the amount of energy that you would put into planning this date, if it was with your partner or a friend, um, put that energy into it and then show up and be excited. I do this all the time. I go on little dates with myself and I love it so much. And I get so much energy from just vibing with myself. I think now I'm going to go into nature and go to the waterfall with Afro by myself and meditate and do some rafe and just connect to myself and connect to nature and get the downloads. And as women, when we do this, we are so much more in our bodies. And when we're in our bodies, when we're really getting the wisdom from the, from source, like the biggest way to cut us off from our power as souls in a female body is to disconnect us from our bodies because our our connection to our body is our superpower it is also for men but it's especially for women because a lot of things we feel through our bodies and this is how we know whether it's our truth or not and of course I'm still in my analytical brain I still you know I was very good in math and science in school and like you know studied law and everything so I out of for out of a, a lot of women, uh, I am actually very balanced in my masculine and feminine, but I will say that in this time of life, I am having so much way more fun in my feminine energy. I've explored being led by the masculine energy within my own body, and I still find places, like again, speaking my boundaries where that is important, but oh, I feel so yummy to just flow just flow and to create situations and a whole life where I can flow. Like I was talking to some girlfriends who are going back to Germany soon and they're just like, you can just wake up and do whatever feels good for you in that moment. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, I just have the parties and of course like different appointments that I make with friends and um, different things that I'm excited about, but they're all things I'm excited about and I can shift them at any moment according to how I feel in my body. So my body is the one who is in charge and I have a great connection to her and I'm always listening to her and she therefore gives me a lot of, I get a lot of downloads through my body and how I feel about things. And 
um, that helps me to navigate things. And there's so many times where something will happen and I just, I just feel a certain way in my body and I'll tell Faraday, I don't have an intellectual reason for this, but you know, this person doesn't make me feel safe in my body or I feel really excited to go to this place. I don't know why, but this is like my, my body is telling me it's a fuck yes and we should go here. Or for instance, like the idea of us living separately for a month. And I'm like, and he's like, why? We have a three bedroom house. Why do we need to live separately? And I'm like, my body is saying this is what I need right now. And please, can we honor what it ne- it says? Because I trust it. And I, I really need you to trust me right now. And he's like, okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. So this is the w- the feminine power. Wow. I feel like I was rambling there for a while. I don't know what I just said, but I'm just excited to be making podcasts again. I've made some recently about what's going on with Freddie and I and I realized that some of the stuff I want to just keep private because it's things that we have worked through and there is something about me speaking my truth and then there's something about I think the thing that I've landed on is I I have spoke my truth to him and to the elders that are doing couples counseling with us and I feel very heard and now I want to just move forward and vibe and just be happy and be in my my yummy happy inner child place so this is the Britney version that you're going to get from now on because I feel safe in my body I feel vibey and I feel like fully supported by my community and the universe and my guides and everyone everyone who's watching And I know everything is like working out perfectly. And I really feel that, you know, like it's like deep in my bones, it's in my body, it's in my womb. And um, yeah, I'm speaking up for my truth every step of the way. So it feels amazing. Um, There's so much more to say, but uh, I will leave you with this. Uh, My next podcast, I'm going to talk about birth control because so many of you are asking this. Um, And... I feel ready to finally speak about it. The reason why I hadn't spoken about it before was just because, again, it's something private and people have so many opinions about birth control. Um, But I feel like it's important just to share my truth and and you guys can take what you need and leave the rest. Um, I just uh, released an AI clone of myself. A friend of mine made it for me. Thank you, Feda. And um, it's like you can ask her questions and it's basically like a coaching it's on telegram so it's just like you ask and she responds and all of it is from all of the content I've ever made here on on my podcast and then I've talked to her for a long time and kind of like trained her to speak like me so um reach out on Instagram if you want access to that Uh, it's really fun we have hundreds of people using it right now and people are saying it's like changing their life they're crying it's like a therapy session uh so many amazing feedback thank you guys and keep it coming uh and we're making it better and better as we go so just a lot of exciting things on the horizon there's so much more i can speak to i just got accepted to an eco village tamara i'm going to go to their community leadership program in august it's in portugal uh this um Eco Village was started 30 years ago or over 30 years, maybe 35 years ago by Germans in Portugal. And it's like the longest standing Eco Village that I know of that's like working as a sustainable, they're almost completely off grid, like they are almost completely self-sustaining. And they have been, they have like people who were born into the Eco Village that are now my age, like early 30s. So I find that fascinating. Like I'm just going to, I'm so excited to go talk to them. And like the people who run the program are like these 70 year old women who are just like badass and super wise. And I'm really excited. So that's like a whole month immersion in August. I'm going to do that in Portugal. So I'll be out in Europe and bopping around for a little bit. And yeah, I was super excited for everything. Okay. I'm going to go to the waterfall. I love you all. Keep being in your power. You're amazing. And I will see you in the next episode.